Hi, and welcome to Lab 3. This week we want to design a converter that will take four switch inputs and convert them to an output that displays on one of our seven segment LEDs on our DE0 board. We all are very familiar with seven segment displays. We see them every day. But how do we get inputs to, go to work to them? And how do we display the values 0 through 9 on our seven segment displays? Okay, well the first thing we need to do is to go ahead and read the example 2.23 in the textbook. This will explain some of the ways that the seven segment displays, the LEDs, actually work. You also want to copy the truth table from the example and begin to create equations for them. There's a handout that's to be used as their template. As with all the labs, there is a manual that's associated with each lab, as well as a docx file. This docx file is the template that you should be ent using to enter all of your screenshots, as well as any um, information that is required for your report. Make sure that you download this docx file and not try to write everything from scratch. You also need to download your files associated with each lab. So go ahead and download your files and download and save your docx file. This is the manual that I'm basically working from for this video. Taking a look at the template, we see that we have to enter the truth table for seven different functions. A different function for each of the LEDs associated with one seven segment display. Looking at the manual in the book <coughs> or the slides from class, you can figure out what these values should be. <clears throat> you can also figure them out by writing down each digit that you would see, 0 through 9, and determining which LED would be on. So go ahead and fill out your truth table for that. The next thing you want to do is to write equations. Okay, so we're ready to go ahead and start a new project for using our Cordis Prime Edition Light. Uh, I'm sorry, Prime Light Edition. So we'll come up here to File and we'll choose New Project Wizard. And we're going to go ahead and use the, uh, the wizard again this week. We'll say Next and then we want to give it a path. I saw this week that what some students had done was when they created their path, they allowed a space to be in their path name and that was causing some problems. Don't do that. Don't have any spaces in your path name. If you're using the word Digital uh, Space Devices, Make sure you put an underscore. Some of you are using My Documents. Again, uh, there's a space in the My Documents file between My and Documents. Uh, so find a way to get around this. Either use the underscore character, some other character, or just eliminate the, the space itself will work. And so working in my Altera underscore light 15.1, uh, folder. I'm going to create some new folders. I will call ECE3714 um, and then Lab 3. Okay. And the name of my project will be 7 <coughs> Segment Converter. Okay. Again, notice that the name of the project is the same as the name of the top level design entry. We'll go ahead and say next. Before I do that, actually, let's take a look at the existing project. Um, and we could set some defaults, but let's just go through it one more time. So we'll say next, and then we'll create an empty project. And then here, we'll wait to add the files until later. And uh, the next thing we need to do is to find our device. We'll go ahead and scroll up looking for our device. Make sure that you choose the correct number. It is up at the top, 5CEB, so we'll scroll up to, to 5CEB, and then we need A4F23C7. <coughs> so we have that, and we can go ahead and um, say Next, and we'll leave it at VHDL, we'll leave it at Model Sim Altera as our simulation, and do not check your run gate level simulation automatically after compilation. As we've said before, 15.1 seems to create errors if we check that. So we're going to leave that unchecked for now. We'll say next. And it gives us our summary page. We can take a screenshot of that and then we'll finish up.
Okay, if you haven't downloaded your converter files yet for the lab, go ahead and do that now. Just be able to click on it and choose to download. So I will uh, download mine and I'm going to place them in my directory for my project. <clears throat> um, I want to take them and uh, yours should download direct, directly. I want to save these in, um, in my local directory for my project. So I'm going to go to um, Altera Lite and I'm going to go to 15.1, 3714, Lab 3 and just place them in my local directory. Uh, you should just be able to download them and from downloads put them in your local directory. I now need to extract them so I'll go ahead and extract all and uh, typically what happens here is it goes ahead and it actually creates a separate folder and we see that's what's happened here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that folder and just um, cut these uh, five files and I'm just going to place them up here in the local directory where my project is. So I will place them here and um, so now I, I do have conflicts because I have two, two files that have the same name. I want to save them both so I will go ahead and uh, place them in my local directory. Okay. <clears throat> Once I've done that I will go ahead and um, and delete this extra folder. I don't need that and I don't need the, uh, the zip file either so I can go ahead and delete that. Alright, now I have all of the files that I need and I can go ahead and go back to my uh, Quartus Prime Lite. So here I am at, at Prime Lite and I see that I have all of those files associated with my project. You may need to come up to project and add files and then uh, find those files um, in this path. In last week's lab, we created a schematic capture file. We drew the circuits that we wanted to implement. In this week's lab, we're going to just write equations. So rather than draw, drawing seven, sep seven separate circuits, we're just going to write seven equations and we're going to allow the CAD tools to handle the implementation of the circuits for us. And so what we need to do is we need to create a .v file. As a matter of fact, we already have a .v file. We can actually look that we've added the .v file to our project. Opening up that file, we see that it is a Verilog file and it has all of our inputs that we're using W, X, Y, and Z as well as those seven uh, outputs called A through G. <clears throat> Taking a look at our docx file that we created, we should now at this point have equations for A through G. If you haven't done that yet, go ahead and take the time to fill out the truth table and come up with each of the equations. Once you have the equations, you can just type them in uh, down here at the bottom, near the bottom of this particular file. As you can see, A is already given to you. As you if you look at the um, truth table or your equations, uh, for A we see that there are eight um, <clears throat> min terms or eight rows where, uh, F, where A is equal to 1. And those <clears throat> um, rows happen to be row 0, row 2, and so forth. And so each of these are where A is equal to 1 in the truth table. <clears throat> and so we're going to enter the rest of our equations for B through G in exactly the same way. Notice that I've used the tilde for not, the ampersand for and, and the not for the uh, or. I'm sorry, not the not, the straight bar for the or. And so those are the, what we want to use. And we're going to go ahead and write equations for, um, for B through G as well. Now, after we've done that, or in the meantime, we see that we also have this not. Each of the equations that you write will also have to be put in parentheses and will have to be preceded by a not because our seven segment displays are actually pull down LEDs rather than pull up LEDs. And so we need to basically have low true equations. We're going to write them, write the equations in terms of where f would be equal to 1, but then we're going to complement the entire equation. Okay, 
So that's what we'll have to do is to write our seven equations. So go ahead and do that. In the previous labs, we've used a .bdf file as our top level file. Once we've written in all of our equations, we can go ahead and set the .v file to our top level. And so what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and right click it and choose as top level. So do that. Okay, and then you can go ahead and save. All right, so now we have our top level as our .v file, and we want to go ahead and um, compile. So we can go ahead and compile our design. By now we've added all of our equations, we've saved our .v file, and uh, basically it is creating um, the interface just as if we had our BDF. Just a couple notes um, to discuss while we're waiting for this to compile. Make certain that when you program your board you have the switch set to run, not to program. We put the board in program mode if we want to program the ROM, but we're not programming the ROM, we're only programming the FPGA. So just be aware of that. Okay, so I have finished compiling and I our model sim. So we'll come to um, assignments and settings and we will go to <coughs> uh, simulation and we'll check and we have it model sim. We don't have the run gate level simulation automatically set. We have this set to VHDL and we're going to come down here to compile test bench. We're going to click on compile test bench we're going to go ahead and create a new test bench. So we'll say new and then we'll call it <coughs> seven segment uh, converter test. And uh, we'll go ahead and look for the file. And here's our, our .vt file. That's what we want. We want the .vt. This is our test file. Seven segment converter test .vt. We'll click on that and we will add that to our test bench. We can then say OK and we will say OK here. And then we have to add our .do file. So we'll use the script to set up the simulation and we'll look for our .do file. There is seven segment converter test.do. We'll click on that and we will apply and say OK. Okay, once we've set up our test bench, we can go ahead and run our test uh, by clicking on the tools and run simulation tool and then the gate level simulation. Uh, if we get the error that says rerun the EDA netlist test uh, writer, then remember what we have to do. We have to go to settings and so we'll go to assignments and settings. We'll come down here to more EDA uh, netlist writer and we'll check to make sure that we have generate netlist for functional simulation only and we will turn that on. So we'll check that for on and we'll say OK. We'll apply and say OK and then we have to recompile. OK, so now that we've finished the compilation we can go ahead and start the simulation tool, run simulation tool, gate level simulation, and model sim should come up. So uh, we'll be patient and we'll wait for it to come up and uh, that should give us our new simulation for this project. Some of you get the uh, <clears throat> vSim button at the bottom that has to be clicked on. And so there we have it. We have our um, <clears throat> simulation. Notice now we have 16 different tests. We have um, our inputs. We can uh, click on our inputs and we see that we actually have four different values of our inputs, all zeros through all ones. Okay. We can either read it all together or we can read each individual line. We can uh, minimize this and so we only see the bits in binary order, we can actually change that if we want to have this 
uh, in binary, we can change the radix um, <clears throat> and come down here to radix and then choose decimal if we, if we want to count in decimal. Uh, whoops, I didn't get uh, meant to do unsigned. So I need to go to unsigned. And so now I have the values 0 through 15. <clears throat> I have my outputs um, A through G. I don't have any way that I can actually name that, but I could check if it's all zeros. If I have an error and I want to check one way to do it, I can go ahead and pull this out. Let's assume that my error is in all zeros. Um, then I can actually look at my output and I can see whether I have all of the bits equal to zero except for the last one. Right? All of the bits are equal to zero except for G. Remember that with uh, zero, everything's turned on except for the middle LED. And with low true logic, being on means it's equal to zero. Low true logic says being off is a logic one. Okay. All right. And so there we have it. We have all tests passed. You can take a screenshot of your simulation and turn that in. Uh, pasting it into your template. After you've run Model Sim, you can go ahead and program your device and uh, do your hardware setup, add your file from your output files, and show that it actually does write to a seven segment display. And that's what you have to do for Lab 3. Okay, in lab three, we used a .v file, a Verilog file, to input our equations. On future labs, we're going to go back to our schematic captures, but there are going to be times where we're going to want to write to our seven-segment display. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make a symbol out of our device. And we can do this <clears throat> by clicking on uh, our, our file that actually is our... Um, seven segment converter and we're going to create a file so notice here that i have my my dot v file my, i have my seven segment converter dot v that i have already compiled and i'm going to come down here and create symbol files so once i've created a symbol file for that then it actually makes it available for me <coughs> to use on future labs i'm going to come up here and i'm going to choose um a new uh <coughs> BDF file, and, and then I'm going to have the capability of actually adding a symbol. I'm going to come to Symbols, and notice now I actually have a folder called Project, and I'm going to click on Project, and I have a new symbol called 7-Segment Converter, and I'm going to just place that in, in my BDF. Um, I can now use this as any other, uh, just as I would any other gate, whether it's an AND gate or an OR, um, but now... I have my seven segment converter. Remember that this only does zero through nine. You may find in future labs that you want to go zero through, um, through F. You want to actually have your 16 bit or, or um, four bit to hex converter. But <clears throat> um, this will work to do your digit zero through nine. Okay, bye.